Morning, everybody. This is Joe from uh, Borowski Race at the SEMA Show, and I'm here with my buddy Ben. How you doing, Ben? Awesome to see you again. Oh, and you rolled in here from Australia, huh? I think about a 20-hour trip with a flight and a bit of a drive, so we're finally here. So happy to be here. Great that you guys are over there as well, and we can finally catch up again. Well, perfect. Uh, why don't you uh, tell the folks a little bit about uh, your company and uh, uh, how it is that we got to be doing business and where I love we're going. It. The backstory. So, Mtron is an Australian automotive a manufacturer of high-end engine management systems and uh, through one of our contacts, Marcus, uh, we met him and he was using one of the Borowski, uh, I think at that stage it was an alloy block LS3. Mm -hmm. And then from there it progressed and went on, I think he's in a dart block now, over 3,000 horsepower engine. Absolutely incredible guy, absolutely incredible company. Yeah, so tell us about your company. So Mtron, we focus very heavily on the high-end engine management system side of things and vehicle control. So not only are we looking after the actual engine side, it's all about power delivery. Moving in from there, integrating into the whole chassis to make sure we can get the power down to the ground and win races. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess uh, I would describe the difference between yours and other products out in the market as professional grade versus uh, More of a sports, uh, I'd say a sportsman grade. So, sportsman grade, and yeah. And that starts at the actual hardware level where the ECU itself is in a billet aluminium, aluminum enclosure. <laughs> Al aluminium is fine, you're Australian, we'll let that go. <laughs> and uh, we use all genuine like amp super seal connectors. The ECU itself uses all automotive grade componentry, which I don't think too many guys, if any, are actually doing that. But we do that to make sure that when a car's out on a racetrack, there's gonna be no ECU failures. Right, and uh, I guess it's uh, these units, we're putting them in not just cars, yeah. but we're putting it in, uh, putting them in, uh, for instance, airboats and yep. uh, you know, rock climbers, you know, where they're gonna get Absolutely. really speed on. So like some of the harshest environments, so there's a trophy truck, open four trucks, rock bounces. Fan boats. The fan boat thing blew my mind. Air boats, air boats, air boats, air boats, oh, air no. boats. <laughs> I'll eventually. Sorry, catch on all to you that. folks in Louisiana. Yeah, that's one. Hey, once I get to Louisiana and see it for myself, it'll be ingrained in my head. Okay. Well, yeah, there are a lot of other places you should go visit. Uh, we got friends in Florida in I, air boats. I can't and, wait. I can't yeah, wait. Uh, and they'll probably want to give you a ride too. And you know, be, be prepared. Hold on. Give me a ride. You said 4,800 horsepower. That's a bit extreme in an air boat. Well, that's what we do is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> it's the only way to roll. So. Yeah, that's why we're here, isn't it? Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, we talked about the physical differences yeah, sure. uh, uh, of the of the case. Uh, how about the physical differences and the, the harnesses that we uh, yeah, developed together? Absolutely. So the Browski spec harness, which is an actual <laughs> Tepcel harness, uh, DR25 coated. Everything is designed to be motorsport grade. So whatever we put that in, we know we're going to have no issues at all with the wiring. You can see some typically off the shelf harnesses and you look at them and you can just see it's not quite at that level, it doesn't have the flex available in the harness. So the way that you have yours, you can wrap it around a firewall, back around heads and you know the thing's gonna be bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, then I think we're moving into another level of the physical attributes of the product. It's a much faster processor. Yeah, yeah, so definitely when we look at the actual ECU, the, the software side of things, well, that's where a lot of tuners who have come from different systems start to realize the Mtron difference. And, you know, most engine management systems can run an engine. That's not the problem, but it's all the complex strategies behind, all the closed loop, all the channels, all the calculated channels that live in the back end of the ECU, which really separates the Mtron to basically any other system on the market. We're starting to see it in more and more high-end motorsports. And to be honest, every time it's there, it's, it's podium or winning. So definitely, you know, it's as far as the tuner wants to go, the ECU is going to back him 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think with the higher processing speed, we're capable of doing different things that the other simply cannot, it's impossible a, a to do. A really interesting strategy, which we actually used in Marcus's car, was we had a secondary drive by a wire motor on the actual uh, intake charge pipe. And especially when that car was on the converter coming up to sort of, you know, get staging, it would actually crack that valves just so slightly to actually bring the engine up in RPM and get the thing staging. I think in the logs it was almost a second and a half quicker having that than not having that. So these are the little functions, even for drag racing, that we're bringing innovation to. And I'm sure you'll see that in the next couple of years, every single person will be doing that. But we created the strategy and we had the hardware to back it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you yeah, know, for instance, some of the other things would be uh, on uh, uh, some of our supercharged engines, the yeah. uh, control of the throttle body. 100%. 
And that's another one. And that's uh, a lot of the cars even here at SEMA. We have the, again, a, a second drive-by-wire motor. We can, in some instances, control up to four of these. And we can have variable sort of torque numbers. And that's essentially by bleeding off that excess air. So we can manage that and create more drivability and different drive modes or, again, traction control as well. Yeah, well, thinking about this specific uh, engine, uh, uh, it has such a large throttle body, it's kind of like a modern fighter plane yep. where it's aerodynamically unstable and can't fly without the computer. I get it. With the Mtron, we're able to, because it's a, such a faster processor, control it and drop the idle down from basically, I'd say, a street unacceptable 1200 yep. Yep. to a nice... Uh, you and know, make a real linear power curve through right, the car. Right, yeah. So we're down around in the, you know, in the mid-900s yep. because it can. Yeah. Uh, with the lesser processor, it can. Yeah, and like that's uh, like the shooting strategies, especially, you know, Tim over there at Browski, like super intelligent guy, he's able to push the limits of what's available. And, you know, guys don't just want a thousand horsepower that they can just go to a drag strip anymore. They want to be able to go to, you know, cars and coffee. They want to have the family in the car driving around. And you just can't get that out of a lot of systems. Right. But the Emtron allows that flexibility, even right. moving into strategies like throttle mass right. flow, which you know, essentially just makes the car so much easier to tune and so much easier to drive. Right, and then I think in terms of uh, uh, troubleshooting, if people have issues, uh, w for instance, the Mtron, because of its higher capabilities, can yeah. resolve which cylinder is knocking. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. All right, you've done your homework here. <laughs> so definitely on our knock side, especially on the LS stuff, we'll have dual knocks, one per bank. And, you know, a lot of systems will just go, okay, we can hear knock, there's something going on here. Whereas the Mtron will actually individually uh, trace each cylinder. And we can see the knock trace on each cylinder. So we can go back and go, all right, number two is noisy. We can either manually pull that ignition timing out or leave it to the ECU to do that. So it's a closed loop knock system per cylinder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, these are capabilities that uh, just sure. aren't otherwise And available. we can go further on it as well. Like the ECU itself, that's one box to look after the whole car. So it has dual onboard Bosch Lambda controllers. So, you know, our O2 sensors go directly into that ECU. A four channel oscilloscope, that's a really big feature where we're trying to you know, whether we're diagnosing a, a noisy uh, crank signal, for instance, or a wheel speed, which will be going directly into the ECU as well, we can actually see that trace. And without bringing out another external oscilloscope, the ECU can manage all that side of things for us. So we have clear transparency as to what exactly is going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and then of course, moving out to all of the various sensors yeah. that you can have throughout the vehicle. Yeah. So, uh, for sure, like whatever, like we're incredibly flexible. So, whatever sense you want to put on there, the issues, as long as you have a calibration file, the issues is going to be able to manage it. Yeah, well, I think the torque management is something that people would want to really yeah. understand. So, a we can deeper. go so deep into this. And well, I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bit of a, I'll give you just an example. So, you know, a lot of issues out there, they'll have like a, you know, drag racing, we'll look at a tail shaft speed curve, and basically we build an ignition table around that. But what we can do with the Mtron stuff, you know, circuit racing, we may even use GPS coordinates to sort of limit power or, or steering angle to limit torque, things like that. But uh, one example is we can use a tail shaft rate of acceleration. So hypothetically, we might say this car can, you know, accelerate at a rate of a thousand RPM a second on a tail shaft. And if it goes any higher than that, are we in wheel spin? Well, the ECU also has a three axis G meter. So we can look at that to validate, is that wheel spin? Are we still maintaining G force or if we're losing G force? And if we're losing, obviously we have wheel spin. So we'll latch back to that torque number where we saw that. And then we progressively put power in again. So it's an incredibly quick intuitive system. And again, it's all out of one ECU. Okay, and then I guess the kind of the, the last general section is the uh, uh, data logging capabilities. Yeah, yeah for sure. So. We've got our onboard logging, so look, especially, you know, guys in a, in a drag instance, for instance, drag example, uh, we can log every channel that we're looking. The ECU has around 500 run times as well. We can log everything out of there. So whatever you're looking to do, whatever channel you're looking to see, we can log all that and, and, and basically come back and have all the answers for anyone. Like I always say, you know, you either have data or you have an opinion, and that's why data is so crucial to our company and to the success of anyone out there racing. Uh, but wait, you're allowed to say data here. Uh, data? But it's data. 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 <laughs> we'll, we'll Americanize them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lift a bonnet of the car. Australia's go data it. here at data. We're, yeah, good. Yeah. We're good. I confuse everyone over here. No one knows what I'm talking about. It's um, We keep it exciting anyway, right? Right. Um, so, look, definitely. I think data is the most important part, and I think everyone really needs to, 
you know, learn probably more about logs, what they're reading, and how that can affect you know the outcome. And a lot of drag guys, they do look at things like clutch slip, tail shaft, and RPM, and sort of build everything around that. But you know, the ECU has so much capabilities. Let's look at every parameter to see if something else is influencing something. Perfect. Uh, one uh, last uh, question, and that is on uh, uh, hookups for Marine. Yeah. Uh, do you working on that uh, connection? How's that going? Yeah, so that was uh, that was some CAN integration stuff using the J1939 protocol. So yeah, definitely that's like what we do is continually build firmwares to, to fill out more and more applications, and and that's on the checklist for this current firmware coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, awesome. Ben. And uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll see uh, if we can't uh, uh, get Nick in front of the camera for the new product. I would love to do that. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys.